Hello everybody, it's Lucas Rubelke with another AngularJS screencast. Today we are going to be tackling the problem of where do you put your code to manipulate the DOM. This is a question that comes up fairly often with people that are new to Angular. And so if you're not supposed to put DOM manipulation code in the controller, where does it go? And so I'm going to show you an example of it precisely how to approach this problem and where to put your code. So let's get started. What I have here is a very simple Angular application. Um, I'm bootstrapping, referencing a module called My Module. I am including uh, the latest version of jQuery. I have AngularJS Release Candidate 10. Um, I'm referencing an app.js file which simply has um, just the minimal code to, to get this module off the ground. I'm calling it my module. And then I have a style sheet that I'm referencing that has one style in here. It's a simple style to simply take a div and turn it into a 40 by 40 pixel box. And so the first thing we need to do is build out a directive. And so my module directive, let's call this my widget. I'm going to create a function like so. And so I'm going to create just a skeleton of this and we're going to get it on the page and then I'm going to come back and add in the functionality. So I'm going to start to stub out a link function that we're going to use in this directive. A link function is essentially responsible for registering DOM listeners and updating the DOM. So let's go link function equals function. And I'm going to go ahead and inject scope element and attributes. And I'm not going to put anything in here just yet. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and return this directive. So this is essentially just a, uh, a factory function. And then we're going to reference the link function like so. Okay, then let's go over here and let's get this on the page. Pretty simple. We're going to go with my widget. Close this off and I'm going to go ahead and put a div in here and let's give it an ID of one and a class of box. I'm going to duplicate this so we just have two of these on the stage. Let's clean up this code real quick and let's see what this looks like. So pretty simple. We just have two boxes on the stage that do not do anything or is not doing anything yet, but we are going to add in the functionality now. So in this link function, let's go ahead and start to build out two functions that we're actually going to put some animation code in animate up, animate right. Okay. So let's do animate right first equals function. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use the jQuery uh, animate method. So this is pretty simple. If you want to know more about this, I recommend just reading the documentation. They have extensive uh, documentation on this particular method, and there's just a lot of really cool things you can do. But um, for the sake of this exercise, I am just going to, to actually, because we're going right, I'm going to just add 50 pixels to its current position. And so let's go down and do animate up function so we're going to do the same thing here but we're just going to animate if 
from the top, let's add 50 pixels. Okay, so we have these two functions here. Let's go ahead and wire them up. Uh, so we're going to use just the, uh, the jQuery uh, selector notation here. Let's go one. And uh, we're going to use the on method here to set this up. Click, animate, let's go animate up. And I just realized this is a bit of a misnomer here. Let's actually call this animate down because we're actually going to be moving down. Oops, there we go. Super, so let's go ahead and run this and then we'll kind of go through the code here. Let's refresh this. We want this to go down, there we go. And this one is going to go right. And so you could literally do just about um, you know, anything that you wanted in here. Any CSS style can be animated. One caveat, if you're doing background color, you need to include the jQuery color plugin to do that, but still pretty simple. And how this is working is uh, within this, we're just referencing using jQuery, the two divs that I created and attaching the event handler and it's all happening happening right in this link function. So this would be considered good practice. Let's just take this one step further just real quick. Um, I didn't know how I felt about actually directly referencing um, DOM elements from via jQuery and the link function. So one alternate, alternative way that you could do this is we could do create one box, two box like this. So these are just going to be references. And then let's go ahead and just call these out. And you can actually get this using element children. And so this is just an array of the elements. And then using this array notation here, you can get it like so. So let's do two box here. Like so. And then in here, all you have to do is reference it like this. And this might be handy if you don't actually know the, um, the IDs or that is going to be coming in your directive or what's actually going to live inside of it as well as um, maybe you don't have the list of using IDs or need a kind of a more generic uh, way to approach this. And so one way to do that is just actually use the children and, um, and then just use the order here via the array notation. And then this will actually refresh this and this works exactly the same way. We've just uh, basically just changed the way that we're actually referencing these elements. And so that uh, sums up this screencast really easy really simple example but i just wanted to show you that by creating a custom directive and then building out the link function that you have a very nice kind of specific place to put your dom uh, event registration and your dom manipulation in so i've had a lot of fun i hope you've learned something and stay tuned for my next screencast have a great one